Welcome to another video coverage of This Week in Rails. This week we have Patrick covering the weekly updates. And there's a lot of cool things that made into the framework this past week, so let's dive right in. For the first item, add exclude method to the action controller parameters. So as a request comes into our Rails application, we can sometimes check if the parameters coming in have certain keys. And before, we just had the include with the question mark method, which would allow us to check to see if it includes something. However, now we have the exclude. And when working with hashes, we already had that method. However, now it's been extended to the action controller parameters. And for the next one is the add ability to handle reconnects with the connected callback. And this one's a bit interesting because there are situations where our cable connection could experience some hiccups or something where it just loses connection and it has to reconnect. And now when you're creating a consumer in the connected function, you now have the ability to do some other kind of logic in a reconnected. And this one's a bit interesting because we could find ourselves in situations where we have disconnected from the cable connection and we may miss messages that come in by the time the action cable reconnects. And so with this one, we could have the potential down the road to have the server rebroadcast those events. And I think that's really cool for the potential that we could get with this. However, one experience that I've had with action cable in the past, so Drift and Ruby was originally a Rails 5 application and I've worked through over the years upgrading it to Rails 7. And the initial implementation that I had with WebSockets, I was using Action Cable to broadcast changes. So as you entered in a comment, that comment would be broadcasted to everyone who's on that page. And it worked okay, but I found that I had a lot of code in my application that was sometimes unstable, especially if it lost connection and I found myself having to create a lot of different channels. As I upgraded to Turbo and started using some of the broadcast methods within the models, all those issues kind of disappeared and I was able to have a much more stable experience around comments and eventually I removed all of those custom subscriptions that I had created in favor of the Turbo broadcasts. So I hope this addition will kind of stay in the background and something that Turbo could adopt. And the next one is add Puma to an engine's gem file. And this one's pretty big because if you've created a new Rails engine in the recent past, the dummy application that's included with the engine could have some issues. So with this change, we no longer need to add Puma to the gem file to make sure it works out of the box. And the next one's pretty interesting where the SSL mode option was added to the DB console command and the MySQL database tasks. And this is going to be important where you're serving the MySQL service over a SSL connection. Whereas before the SSL mode would drop back to preferred, but now you're going to be able to verify that that connection to the MySQL service does have a valid certificate authority and SSL certificate. And the next one is pretty interesting where the Rails UJS has now been decaffeinated. So all the coffee script has been removed and modern JavaScript is used instead. And so if you're creating a new Rails 7 application, this one's not going to really apply to you. However, if you are working on an older Rails application using Rails UJS, and if you've already migrated to Webpacker, then this one could be a bit nice. And the next one is an update to the Rails documentation where the guide for the error reporter was added. And this one is really interesting because I did not even know that the error reporter was part of the Rails 7 release. And this could have a lot of benefits for the Rails applications, especially around APMs or error monitoring services, where the error reporters don't need to insert a rack middleware to capture the unhandled exceptions from requests. And this has the potential to be a huge benefit because it can help decouple the application code from the error reporting libraries. And error reporting libraries would need to do less monkey patching, so it would then be less intrusive to the Rails application. And we can dive into this one a bit and let's look at the files changed. So before you could have some kind of method or function that was doing something and then you would rescue some error and then report it. So now we can call the rails error handle and then whatever exception and then we can do something like pushing it up to an error monitoring solution. And as always, 
I want to go through and just thank the contributors that have contributed to the Rails framework this past week. There's a lot of veterans as well as some new committers. So I really appreciate everything that you have done to help to make the framework better. And if you would like to receive your own copy of the email newsletter, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails. And again, this is not a publication that I create. I simply provide the video coverage of it. And so that's a wrap for this week's video coverage of This Week in Rails. Thanks for watching.